I don't want to set the world on fire. You're an actual like song musical critic. What do you think? How was that? Nice falsetto. It was, I'm I, I nailed the falsetto there. I thought that was more of a soprano. I got another octave over that. I just want to set a flame in your heart. I need training, obviously. <laughs> We're gonna make a dirty wastelander today on how to drink. I'm a huge fan of Fallout. And when I say that, I mean Fallout 1, Fallout 2, Fallout New Vegas, and The Outer Worlds. I feel bad because Fallout 3 just didn't click for me. Bethesda just doesn't, the way they make games just doesn't do it for me, it turns out. I have not played Fallout 4 or Fallout 76, but I've had so many requests for a dirty wastelander that I really couldn't ignored. And if you guys are enjoying Fallout 4, I can't, you know, that's great. I'm not gonna take that away from anybody. It's just, I don't think it's a game for me. But today we're gonna talk about the Dirty Wastelander. Now in-game, the Dirty Wastelander is made with mute fruit, Nuka-Cola, and whiskey. When I set up to make a Dirty Wastelander, I thought, you know, the real baller move here might be to make my own Nuka-Cola. I think that there is in the future an entire episode recreating soft drinks from Fallout where we'll do a Sunset Sarsaparilla, a Nuka-Cola, a couple varieties of Nuka-Cola. Today we're just gonna make the Dirty Wastelander and I'm going to assume that Nuka-Cola, based on reading its description, is very similar to most colas. So today, our stand-in for Nuka-Cola is the Mexican Cola from Maine Root. It's a little spicier than, I think, a regular cola. What the heck? Let's open her up and find out what it tastes like. This is nice. This is a great cola. This is just a little bit more sophisticated than something like a Coca-Cola. It's a little less cloyingly sweet than a Coke. It's got a little bit more bite to it. Um, if you've ever had a Moxie Cola, that's a really unusual cola. It's not quite there. Moxie has like quinine in it, so it's like a bitter cola. I love that. It's not that. It's somewhere in... It's like a half a step towards that. Okay. The other thing we have to define is what is mute fruit? Now, when I played Fallout 1 and 2, there was no mute fruit yet. There was fruit in the game, and it was... When you picked it up, you could see that it was mutated. I do think that mute fruit in the Bethesda games is just a, a cheeky and, and clever way of keeping that alive, and so that it's the same fruit from Fallout 1 and 2. I'm fairly certain that in Fallout 1 and 2, the fruit is at some point in some backwater line of dialogue defined as being apples. But even if it's not, when we look at what mute fruit looks like in the game, we see that it's got a stem off the top of it. We know that it grows on a tree and that that makes it about the size of your hand. And then it's like bifurcated, like the skin of a berry and it turns blue. So it also looks like a blackberry. And so I think mute fruit might be a hybrid between apples and blackberries. We also see crispy mute fruit in the game. And that looks a lot like apples. And what is whiskey? That's pretty simple, actually. We know from the game <laughs> that if you look at the bottle of whiskey, it says Irish whiskey on it. And today, our Irish whiskey will be this pot still green spot. An excellent Irish whiskey. Perhaps even too excellent for what we're doing with it today. You know when you have, like, good bottles of stuff? You drink those last? So I'm all out of my, like, well liquor, and I got this good green spot, so that's what we're gonna go with? I think it's gonna be great. You don't need to do this. That's what we're gonna do. We're going with green spot. So I said that I think that mute fruit are mutated apples and blackberries, and I've got blackberries and apples, but then I thought about it. And I was like, you know, there's gotta be something more to this drink than being Nuka-Cola, berries, apples, and whiskey. It's not much there. And I realized, you know, you make this at a cooking station with a heat source present. So I decided maybe part of the process behind making a real dirty wastelander is baking those apples. So I've baked some apples for this. Baking an apple is easy. You cut the top off, you core it out a little bit, put in some butter, put in some brown sugar, some cinnamon, some nutmeg, allspice if you like. Throw it in the oven at 350 or 400 degrees. Keep an eye on it. it should be done in about 10 minutes. They're very quick to bake up. And it, it does change the whole texture of it, the flavor, everything. The, the flesh of the apple has become soft. So we're gonna take a whole apple, we're gonna throw it in the shaker with our ingredients, shake it all up, strain it out. I think it's gonna kill. I think it's gonna be a, a, a banging drink. And that's it. I think we've talked a heck of a lot. Plenty. I think we've talked plenty. Ah, one more thing. The one thing I will say is that a baked apple 
is a baked apple. We could cut them in half, maybe. We're better off sticking with a whole baked apple because there's a lot of stuff in there that we don't want to have spill out. We just want to drop it straight into our shaker. And that means that this recipe can't be smaller than a double. So we're gonna make two of these. Um, so this is a recipe that serves two. These are still a little bit warm, but they're not too hot to handle. I'm gonna drop one baked apple into my tin. And now that brings our sugar, some spice, a lot of flavors are in that. Now I wanna add four ounces of my Irish whiskey. I don't want to set the world on fire. And I'm gonna add in four blackberries. Blackberries are slightly into an acidic space. They bring a little bit of citrus to this. Pretty sure there's some citric acid in a blackberry. I know strawberries are actually one of the highest vitamin C, citric acid, citrusy things there is. So I think blackberries have gotta be somewhere in that spectrum. It's gonna bring just a little bit, a very small amount of tart to this. And that's okay. That's gonna help the drink, I think, immensely. Uh, that's it because a baked apple's got a lot of stuff going on in it. We don't need to add anything else to this. We've got our mute fruit. We've got our whiskey in the shaker. Let's add ice and shake the heck out of this sucker. One big cube, one little cube. Arr! Really wanted to pummel that baked apple, so I went a little, a little harder there. This wastelander looks very dirty. I've got my two glasses, and I would love to tell you guys that I know how to do a split pour here, but I don't. So we're gonna walk it in one at a time. Looks great. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is add some ice to these glasses. There's a little bit of frost on this one. I'm gonna shave that off just because I can with this ice knife I have. I really like this. It's my, one of my favorite tools. This is perhaps overkill, but sometimes when I see all that frost on my ice, I just I like to clean it up. I should say too, a lot of people ask me, how do I make ice like this? Um, I hope nobody feels deceived. I don't. It is possible to make clear ice at home. You'd use a method called directional freezing. I did a video on it a long time ago. I should revisit the subject. Other YouTubers and bloggers have done a lot better work on clear ice. Camper English being the most important fellow in the world of ice. He is the ice king, okay? Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. I go through a lot of ice on this show, way more than I have the capacity to create. So I acquire all my ice, I buy it from a place called Hundred Weight that produces ice for fancy cocktail bars around New York City. They produce their ice in a machine called the Kleinbell, which produces 300 pound perfectly clear blocks of ice suitable for carving. And then they cut these blocks and other ones that I use using a food safe bandsaw. And I buy them. Totally ridiculous for most normal home bartenders. But when you're making a YouTube show, these are the kinds of expenses you have to account for. So we put our ice in there. And then we're just gonna top that up with our cola, gently. There's a lot of stuff in here. So this is going to try to erupt. I'm gonna garnish this which of course is overkill. In the game, this drink is a big old beer bottle or something. It is no garnish, but in my case, there's gonna be a garnish. I'm gonna make some slices of apple. We'll have fun with it. We'll do one red and one green. The women don't find you handsome. You should at least find you handy. Hello, hello. I'm gonna take these nice space age looking cocktail picks. I was gonna call them cocktail spikes. These cocktail spikes. Let's give this drink a try and see if I came up with something okay. Ooh, that's lovely. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's great. It's a refreshing, bright drink, not overly sweet at all. You really taste the apple. I mean, it tastes like a snapping into a fresh apple. A very smooth, rich, velvety mouthfeel because of the butter, <laughs> frankly, that's in a baked apple. There's already probably a lot of brown sugar in the cola, so I don't know how much that specifically is standing out, but the spices definitely co-mingle with the cola. Nice spicy punch. The end result is kind of like a nice cold baked apple. The whiskey, despite how much cola and baked apple and fruit there is in here is still present. And that's like the benefit of using a better whiskey. I do think of flavors in terms of like bass and treble it has a nice, trebly flavor that I find really cuts through. It has a, a brighter top of my palate kind of flavor. How would I describe 
green spot. I keep getting shit for people are like, oh, it's disgusting. You always drink it out of the bottles. They are my bottles. That is nice. I'm telling you, you taste that in that drink, despite the presence of all this other stuff. Green Spot is like a cool to your lips, quick mouthfeel that is, the, I'd say crisp. I mean, just like this drink, sharp. It's a pot still whiskey. I would say it has elements that are fruity, probably coming from some of the same things that happen in a pot still Jamaican rum. The end result is nothing like a Jamaican rum. It's not like a banana fruit at all. It is more like orchard fruit, which makes it a great pairing for something here like this. One thought I do have is what would happen if I packed the apples with the blackberries and I baked them together? Definitely worth trying. I have not given that a shot yet. That's something you might wanna consider doing on your own. I'd love to hear if you try that and how, how that comes out. There's a lot of other things you wanna put into those baked apples when you're baking them. So maybe the, the blackberries take up space better served by the other apple baking spices, but if you can figure out a way to do it, I would love to hear how the results go. The best thing about this mix, mix cane cola from the main root is that it's not too sweet. And if anything, it's more spiced than anything else. And that makes it an excellent cocktail ingredient. That's how I made a Dirty Wasteland. I did something I've never seen anybody else do, which is throw a baked apple into a shaker and shake with it. I think we're breaking new ground there. I'm pretty proud of that. War. That's the best Ron Perlman I got. War never changes. That's pretty close. War never changes. Yeah, Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman has done the opening of Fallout since forever. I, I'm pretty sure he's still doing those, actually. I hope he is. I hope he did Fallout 4, Fallout 76. That would be a shame if he wasn't. What I am bummed about is that Tony Shalhoub hasn't returned. Tony Shalhoub, that's like the first speaking character you meet in Fallout 1. Wanderer, I shall believe you for now. Other than the Overseer, which I think was actually voiced by Chris Christopherson. We've got a problem. It's so funny to me too, like Fallout 3 and like Bethesda and the, like they make such a big deal about the voice acting casts that they get for these main characters in the game, but like Fallout 1 had an insane voice cast and they really didn't lean on it or add, like nobody was doing that yet. So many great talents in those games. My watches are provided by Chronic Caliber. If you like watches and have an interest in them, why don't you check them out? There's a link in the pinned comment below. All the barware I use on the show is provided courtesy of Barfly Mixology Gear. Uh, if you want to use any of the tools I'm using on the show, that's where you want to get them from. There's a link in the pinned comment below. I have a Twitch uh, at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. I am probably over there playing Fallout 4 right now, cursing the day it was created, I'm sure. But it did give us this drink. It's simple too. That's what I think is so great about it. It's really simple. Baked apples are pretty easy to make. I'm telling you, it takes 10 minutes. I've been obsessed with baked apples ever since. Pete's Dragon, the original. It's just like one of the movies we had, the four movies we had, so I watched it all the time. So I've done some other Fallout drinks. I did a Sierra Madre Martini and a Stimpak Shot. I think they're both pretty cool. I hope you will check them out. Oh, look at those. Those are some good looking videos. <laughs> I wonder if that's a video you should watch. I should just start doing these like long things like, ooh, what's that about? I wonder if you should click that button.